Welcome back, and um, let's hit it off. Uh, we have a fantastic discussion this morning, and it's a discussion which we began from last week. And um, it's something that I think that concerns every one of us because of the numbers of youths in this country. The sheer number, more than um, two-thirds of the country's population, two out of every three Nigerian is under the age of 24 years. Uh, the country's median age is 18 years. And interestingly, when you pull in those numbers, you probably will think that um, they will play an active role uh, in the country's, uh, uh, country's role as uh, uh, who gets into the office of president or governor or any elected political position. But like I pointed out earlier this morning, if you think about how many people came who voted in President Muhammad Buhari, just under about 18 million. Every year, 6 million uh, infants born in this country means that you probably get 30, 18 million, 20 million in three years. In four years, you probably will have 24 million. And they're not taking part in the electoral process. How much more? The entire bunch. Agbaja Lingo, <laughs> our good friend, journalist, activist, joins us this morning. And it's great to have you, Agba, uh, this so morning. Uh, a pleasure. Talk with us. And nice. since you've been in the... You've been in the forefront of this entire thing for several years, activism as a student, and now, later years, you still continue the activism. I'm sure that it, it shocks you uh, the way this problem with the youth getting involved in politics, either whether they submit themselves to be voted into office or even take part in the electoral process by voting. <coughs> it's really sad. It's the way it should be. But uh, let's get your opening, Agba. You see, I. I don't know if I should uh, situate what I want to say within the context of being a youth, because I am no longer a youth myself. I'm over 40, and uh, <laughs> I actually consider it very derogatory if somebody calls me a youth. <laughs> I used to be at 43, I'm not. At my age, uh, Donald Duke was already doing his second term yeah. as governor of Cross River State, mm. so I don't consider my youth anymore. Uh, I, I was more daring as a young person. I've always been involved. But um, there are several reasons why young people seem not to be interested in um, our political process. Mm. Uh, basically because they don't see it as leading to anything. Mm. You know, you only develop interest for something you are quite sure that the result will either favor you or not. But in this case, we don't even know whether our participation will lead to uh, whatever we are looking for. You go to the polls, you are not even sure whether your votes are going to come. Mm. And then, of course, poverty, a lot of issues. The structure of political parties in Nigeria today mm. will also not allow people with ideas to function. Mm. I don't know if you have attended... <laughs> a typical meeting of a political party before. They don't discuss anything. <laughs> <laughs> when you go there, people shout and wait for the big man to give them money at the end of the day to go. Mm. And um, there is nothing really to draw young people yet into the process. And uh, until we begin to look at changing those dynamics, it might be very difficult for mm. the next few years to, to get young people to participate. Mm. Maybe I want to uh, you know, come from a different angle and put mm. it to you uh, this morning that some people would say, that it's not about the youth being given uh, what they desire, you know, in the nation, but the youths themselves making up their minds and going for it the way they can under the ambits of the law, such that uh, I don't want that. We would expect, okay, you want to exemplify uh, uh, NSAS protest 2020 or whatever it is, but much more than that, one would imagine that the kind of youth that we have in the country are not only brilliant but outstanding in every positive aspect that if they actually mean it, if they desire it, they can do it and cause the change that they want. There's, there's no doubt about that, but is, to develop that interest, to be able to instigate that interest, there must be certain things within the process that will draw people. To, even if you look at the church, for instance, let me use the church as an example. Most of the modern day churches, these mercantilist churches that are now springing up everywhere today, they have a peculiar way of drawing young people into the churches. They either use music, they use uh, singles and married programs, <laughs> you know those catchy catchy things that will interest and young people. And the ambience. People. Yeah, know, and the ambience, of course, to, to draw people into their midst. And then, of course, and, and, you know, um, I, let me be careful and choose my word. I wanted to say enslaving them. <laughs> let, me, let me take that word back. But in the same thing, if you see the way the Republican Party or Democratic Party function in America, mm. you will see reasons why young people are interested. Because when they go for their delegate conventions, as far as you're a member of the political party, you have mm -hmm. your membership card. You are allowed to vote in all those executive elections here and there. But here, <laughs> young people, even by law, in a country where people became leaders mm -hmm. to, in their 20s, mm -hmm. surreptitiously, they decided, after they had gone past, gone past that age, they decided that to be counselor, you must be 25, to be chairman, you must be 30, to be senator, you must be 35, to be president, you must be 40. These rules did not apply to them when they were our age. But the moment they crossed the age, 
deliberately use the constitution to cut off that number from the political process, participating actively yeah. in looking for positions, even when the same law says that franchise is attained at the age of 18. Yeah. At 18, if I can vote, why can't I present why myself I lead? for elections? But deliberately, they have decided to cut that population out and insist that you can start voting at 18, but you can only present yourself for election when you turn 25 or more. Mm. And uh, that was where I had a problem with the not too young to vote bill because I thought it was just a jolly ride that wasn't meant to achieve anything. And up till now, I still cannot find where young people are supposed to use that law and make anything work. Mm. My own position even then was that we don't need to go asking anybody, negotiating with anybody to do a contest elections as young people. Franchise is a double side coin. One side cannot be attained and you wait for the other side. Mm -hmm. As long as I am qualified to go and vote, automatically I qualify to stand for elections. I thought that that should have been the agitation and uh, possibly the reason why up to today, young people cannot still find mm -hmm. how they can use that law to, to better their lot within the political process. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking also too about that. If you look at the way these things are played out, especially uh, she made reference to the NSAS mm -hmm. movement. Uh, is the clearest sign that the young group could come together to achieve anything uh, politically, economically, um, culturally, um, the arts and entertainments, the clear stars are shining in different ways they've been able to make things work uh, for them in that space. But with the politics, they, within one week we're able to get um, you know, what, what many groups in the past per, perhaps would have spent months to achieve, the five for five, and they were able to get it very easily. But after then, uh, things went really um, south quickly. You, you, you thought maybe an opportunity was lost or we're just maybe a year to the election. I haven't seen anything in the space to suggest that people want to shake up the system in the way it happened during the NSAS. I say, I say shake up the system because <laughs> I see some mischievous people try and want to merge the NSAS protests with the riots that happened afterward, which are two different things entirely. But you see, you see anything in, in that way to suggest that uh, maybe um, this could... <laughs> Just like me, I, I don't believe that the next election will change Nigeria. I have no faith in these periodic elections and their mm -hmm. capacity to change Nigeria. Because, um, and I think it's the same situation with most young people out there. You get excited about the process like I said, mm -hmm. that you are hopeful will bring results. But having said that, I would also want to use the opportunity to encourage young people because we don't have any other way otherwise for now. Mm -hmm. Unless all of us, of course, want to take on that will not be the right way to go. Mm -hmm. And if we really want to take power from these people, it is essential that we organize. Very, very essential that we organize in our various small, small spaces to see how we can grab power, even if it is beginning from the local level. Young people really, really have to organize to take power in this country. I have followed politicians. I have reported politicians. And even though they are midnight meetings, wives will call you, family relations, and I'm busy, I'm busy, 2 o'clock in the night, 3 o'clock. But the truth of the matter is that when you are in those meetings, they are not talking about how to develop Nigeria. They are talking about the next elections, their babes, the next, the next thing. They are, no, they are not talking about how to bring light, mm -hmm. how to solve the problem of insecurity. They don't discuss those things. Even if you bring those discussions up, they are bored. <laughs> they, are not, they are only plotting the next election, the next position this person will get. Do all those their midnight meetings center around, around this issue. So if we will get a new crop of leaders, it is also time for young people to begin to organize and begin to discuss about solving our problems. Mm. If need be, I think that if we cannot form our new political parties like people have been advocating, maybe it's time to also find a way to do some parties, maybe at the world level. The same way we participate in cell meetings in our churches and making sure that we build. When you get to church, before one or two weeks, you are compelled to take up a role. <laughs> they convince you that you are working for God, of course, then you are compelled to take up a role. They call you a worker. I believe that even within the political parties, we can play the same rules to build our home here in, in, on planet Earth first before we start building that one that will go to eventually in heaven. We have to go there, take up rules, become secretary, a world secretary of your political party, become world treasurer, mm. become world, whatever it is that they call those positions. I think that young people who are educated, mm. who have organizational capacity, the ability to organize, mm. need to begin to enter those political parties at that level and help to organize. Mm. Because if you don't, we just say until when elections are coming, one money bag will bring money, and then the party chieftains will share the tickets for them. Mm. And then the people that are home continue to follow them and wait for the pretenses to fall from their pockets. Mm. But it's essential uh -huh. that we need to begin to organize.
Okay, I uh, used to watch a news hub on Silverbird Television and Silverbird News 24. This morning, we're taking a look at participation in Nigeria. Uh, youth as passive participants, uh, not only in the polity, maybe the economy people will say, well, young people have a way of trying the best they can to make ends meet. But if the polity is not right and it's not all in comparison of the young people, then how could we cause the change that we're looking forward to having in the country? We have Agba Jalingo in the studios. He's a journalist as well as an activist. Agba, again, well, so nice to have you on the program. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about the fact that, just as you said, that it's very advisable for the young people to go through the ladder, go join these political parties since they, they don't have the money it's money politics that we play, yeah. not only in Nigeria, all over the world, we don't run the party without money. You need money to run and just grow uh, time, you know, with time, then we can get to where we're supposed to be. 2023 is around the corner. And the question is, are the young people, you know, themselves thinking about all the complaints that they have of the country, things are not going right, and seeing themselves as possible solutions and ready to really position themselves to cause the change, not leaving it for the next person. Because that is where it all starts. When it comes to a concert, I will go get tickets, you're going online, you're watching, and I follow Don Jazzy again, you're doing everything and all of that. But when it comes to changing what needs to be changed to give you the kind of country that you want, it seems as if the young people are just waiting for the politicians to make it you know, enticing for them, which you said would never happen. So how do we start to talk to the young people to see this as a responsibility, as an act that they have to, by themselves, make up their minds, you know, concerning it, that they want to see a country of, of their dreams? Well, that's inevitable. We, we don't have a choice. At some point, we have to make up that decision um, uh, to, to, to struggle for power from um, this old man. But you see, even if you want to win election in Nigeria, the lowest position is councillor. You have to be a millionaire to run for councillor. And I don't know how many young people in, in Nigeria are millionaires, yet what percentage of young people are millionaires. Because from the, the, when they bring a form, to, just to indicate interest, you will need to spend a lot of money to do, indicate your interest that you want to run. If you want to go and pick the form to run, it's another set of money. And then you start consultation with the party leaders. And every party leader you go to meet, you are expected to drop money. Elsewhere, if you indicate interest <clears throat> that you want to run election, your constituents will contribute for you. Sometimes, even as rich as Trump was, billionaire, every other time he said he wanted to do something, poor people were bringing, putting money together to support um, his political uh, campaign. And we see that happening even in Europe and America, all over the place. But here, the moment you say, I want to run election, you become a cash cow. Hmm. The same people that are supposed to support you, contribute for you, everybody will want to start milking you. It's all of these tendencies are scaring people away from politics, particularly those who have something to offer. Because even when you get there, it will appear that you are the only one that believes in your ideas, as far as people don't see money. So these dynamics need to start changing. And like I said, it is opportunities like this that will continue to tell young people that this picture must change. It is time for us to begin to identify leaders, even if it is from within the age group system, even if it is from the house fellowship that you attend, to begin to identify people who have capacity. I'll give you an example. My local government, Ubudu, gets at least a minimum of 158 million naira average from federal allocation every month. And if you go to the council, all the councillors, you can't find anybody some councillors from my place don't even know that they are lawmakers. I interacted with some, and they don't know that the councillor is a lawmaker that is supposed to hold the local government chairman accountable. Right. They don't know. They're just like, okay, it was the turn of our village, and they made me councillor. They see themselves as appointees of the, of the executive chairman, as it were. And I think that it is time even for churches to say, okay, this council has 10 legislative uh, positions. It is time for us to struggle and get three or four if we want this community to change. Mm -hmm. There are people within this age grade. There are people within our church. There are people within our mosque. There are people within our ladies' association. You know, we, you know different, different, that have capacity to organize, mm -hmm. who understand how money can be used. Because if you go to the councils, if you see most of the local government chairman, even in Lagos here, they are populated by touts. You don't see professionals. There's a huge capacity gap within the local government mm -hmm. because professionals are running away. But there's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
the violence, mm. the shenanigans, and then the fact that even if you become a local government chairman, the party structure will not allow you to deliver. There are mm. so many people breathing down your throat, left, right, and center. And for most people who have lived their professional lives, those strings are actually very difficult to, to wiggle your way through. But I think we need to develop that toughness, that ruggedity, to put more professional, beginning from the council level. Right. If I had 158 millionaire every month to manage the local government, number one, one thing you can be sure is that no, no governor will collect my money as a local government chairman because I will make trouble. Mm -hmm. And if I get the money, I will not steal it. <laughs> I will work. If I have 158 millionaire, I will know what to do. Exactly. No, go if you touch the money, we will have trouble. Well, people do court. say that. Mm. Why, why not trying to digress that? Mm. You always say that before you get to, the, to, to that position, <laughs> that something happens when the money starts to come and you know that it's within your purview to manage it. That something happens to people that are of integrity most of the times. See, there are, if you say people are not good, they are also good people. It is a lie that we are not going to have good leaders in this country. That is a lie. Mm. It is also a lie that people cannot manage money in this country. It's not true. It is possible. That's why it's just the leadership recruitment process in Nigeria that we need to think out. Mm. The way Nigeria is today, well, it is possible that even if you're a good person, you go into politics, the system will do everything to swallow you. You will need to be exceptionally, so if, if they don't suffocate you to run away, it will be very difficult with the way the system is, unless more and more, for instance, if we have 10 councillors mm -hmm. and you are only one rugged head in the house, it will be difficult for you to operate. But if you have three, four of your kind, you will find places to lean on. Mm. Even if somebody is pushing you to steal money against your wish, you will have people that can support you to hold your ground. Mm. And it is this level of commitment that I'm talking about, that more and more good people, it is easier to resist stealing, to resist corruption, when you have people around you that, that will throw some support at you. It is more difficult to do that if you are just the only voice in the middle of everybody. A, a magistrate told me recently in Cross River that um, it's difficult for her, that her colleagues are breathing down her neck, that she's refusing to collect bribes, she's doing this and that, that they are suspecting as a matter of fact that she's the one opening up their secrets to oh. the rest of them. You see your own people pressuring you every other day. Sometimes it's not even the system alone, it's even the people that you represent. Give us money, give us money, give us money, and once you don't give money, you wouldn't win the, I mean, the next election. Yeah. And um, uh, all of these things, like yeah. I said, combine to, to scare people away mm. from government. But we must change. Because there's a lot of money uh, that these people are controlling that we need uh, people that are sensible to go and handle these uh, resources. Mm. Too much money in the hands of touts, particularly at the local government level. That was why the government even brought the idea of uh, joint accounts with the states mm. because of lack of capacity at the local government level. Mm. Which, which, is, which is the goal of the conversation, you mm. know, to stay up in people's uh, desire to, mm. be to be participants in the electoral process um, actively. It's something, something you say uh, about, and I'm just saying, civic education 101 for those who get into office and don't realize the reason why they're even in the office you don't know. In, in the first instance. I mean, it's shocking. So the, every time we have this discussion, you see that the argument often, the debate often tilts to the side of leadership because everyone open the phone lines, go on social media, mm -hmm. they say that Nigeria's number one problem, the bane of Nigeria's problem is leadership. Mm -hmm. So leadership is how we think we can solve the problem. But there's only as few people as possible can get into governance and be there for four years to make things happen. The, ma the vast majority of the people, the electorate at the end, who will have to make things happen. You know that popular phrase we say in the newsroom, if you can't stand the heat, get out. <laughs> get out because it's always a pressure cooker every day mm. uh, to get your, your news out. It's the same way I'm thinking, for example, in the politics, how can people make the kitchen, which for the politicians who are in there, so hot that it would be better for them to resign when they know they cannot deliver uh, the, the so-called dividends of democracy. How do people put pressure on people in that way we see happen in several other democracies? I saw a video recently from Ghana where a politician went to distribute bags of rice for constituents. Hmm. And they took the bags of rice and threw them back at uh, the fellow <laughs> in the car and said, take your rice away, we want jobs. Hmm. Yeah. We want employment. The video went viral. Um, I think we need to up the ante for what we want from politicians. If I, take, if I take myself as an example, a politician cannot tell me that, uh, cannot come to do campaign for me and give me a bag of rice. No. Mm. I, I don't think any one of them will even try it because I want to know what you want to go and do. I have questions that I will ask you. Concerning security, mm. what will you do? Mm. Concerning employment, what would you do? I'd listen to you and know whether you have anything to offer or not. 
your rise, the place where you come from, your religion is actually the last thing I want to know. What is your capacity? Mm -hmm. And I think that Nigerians should begin to ask these questions. What capacity do you have? Have you done it before? What is your background? What is your track record? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that we, we need to know. And then sometimes, too, I think we must also consciously begin to raise these leaders. Groom them consciously. There are a lot of leadership classes in churches, associations, organizations, professional bodies that mm -hmm. I see all over the place. And I think that with the level of urgency that we have in this country, every one of those groups should take interest in consciously and deliberately building people from within and then sending them into leadership with a view to seeing how they can um, go and change things. The people that end up in political offices today are not leaders. They are not prepared for leadership. They don't even want to lead. They just want to have access to money to spend. Ask many of them what they want to do in government. They don't know. I, have been, I, have, I do a lot of engagement with politicians in my state. And one of the issues we have been battling with, even our senators, is the issue of empowering people with Okada. <laughs> Every now and then. And I, I did some statistics. I showed them that from 1999 till date, Politicians in our state have distributed over 10,000 Okadas. And my question was, let's do some analysis. Have this number of Okadas been able to actually empower anybody? Have they been able to alleviate poverty in the manner you wanted it? If it has not, what can we do differently? Is somebody that came from Indonesia or so and brought up the idea of Go Kada to see how you can improve that same Okada to another, take it to the next level. Somebody improved the yellow taxi to Uber. Is there anything we can do to think? You can't continue to copy and paste from 1999 till today. If this thing is not working, can we change it? Right. Now, it is time for organizations and groups to begin to engage these politicians in that light. And I bet you, every one of them is not calling us, okay, since you don't want us to do this thing like this, how do we do it? <laughs> you know, the conversation is ongoing. And uh, we have arrived at the point where some of us have agreed that, okay, we are going to do a discussion. We need to call a conference of young people to come together and say, okay, this Okada thing, can, should we continue with it? If we must continue, can you bring technology in to, to give it an edge? Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do differently? Let's face out machines. We are going into the knowledge economy. Right. How do we remodel the empowerment that you have been doing since 1999? Mm. These discussions need to continue. And, and in, I, where they are not existing yet, they need to be initiated in mm. our various communities, in our associations, mm. so that the politicians will also know that people are looking at what they are doing. But they want to hold them accountable. Yeah. And then some of them, too, are constrained. Even if they want to go with the new ideas, majority of their constituents still want the old style. Mm. <laughs> they still want to be given salt. They still want to be given pepper. They still want to be given wrappers and all of that. So it is a two-way thing. Mm. While we are insisting that our politicians should become more accountable with our resources, yeah. should also develop capacity. Our Absolutely. people must also know exactly what to request from the leaders. All right. They must know what to request oh, from the leaders. There's mm. never enough time to discuss <laughs> with you any topic at all. And <laughs> I hope that someday soon you return and let us see the role of the family in all of this, especially for the young one that we're just giving birth to. And those that are also old, I think the family has a great impact on you know, an avid person. Uh, especially, uh, there's an adage in your bed that says the, the, a child that um, forgets the home is hanging the, the, the you know, the, the cane that will beat him in the future. They will say that Omoto Solin I know you don't speak much of your but you pay for the classes. Thank you, Agbajalingo, journalist and activist for being part of the program today. Thank you so much, Let the young Nigeria. people, he said it today, he said a lot of great, great things this morning. I do hope that you go there, go on our social media handle, go there, go and watch us, go on YouTube, go just click on Silverbird News 24 and Silverbird Television, watch this program. If you're a young person, see how we can change the, this nation. You're still watching News Hub. We'll take a very short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away.